What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm gonna to do something pretty simple, pretty basic, and show you guys what the components in the actual carburetor do. So each jet, what they do and how to adjust them. This is for somebody that's a beginner and that knows what each component is and where it's located in the carburetor. So if you don't know where those are, I suggest you clicking up in the corner and that will take you to how to completely take apart the carburetor, how to clean it, adjust it, and all that. So this is a video for beginners to get your bike running at its most optimal level. So you don't have to take it to somebody to get it tuned. So before we get started, as you see here, we have two of our display carburetors. These are carbs that we show customers that just sit out on display. These are not functioning carburetors. I wanna start off with this is not the exact science of tuning a bike. This is the most basic way we could think of to explain to our customers and to you as subscribers of how to tune your carb. So as you can see here, there are four components. Yep, that's it, just four. So we're gonna start off here with the pilot. It's going to be the idle and up to a quarter of your throttle input. Next is the air fuel screw. This is going to be on one of either side of your carburetor. We'll get into this shortly. Next is your needle, and it's going to be anywhere from a quarter all the way up to three quarter throttle. So this is where your bike is in the cruising range. And then the last component here is your main jet. This is three quarter throttle to completely wide open. So how we would suggest going about adjusting your carb is Start with your pilot jet and your main jet. All these components obviously need to be in the carburetor, but these are the first two things that you're gonna wanna mess with. As you see in this chart, all these circuits overlap. So they will affect each other slightly in the overlapping areas. So this is something that you're gonna wanna keep for yourself, maybe screenshot it and keep it on your phone or save this video to refer back to. So the very first thing that you need to do is get the bike so it runs. It may run only at super high idle, that's fine, we'll adjust it from there going forward. But get the bike started and you're gonna adjust the actual idle, one of these screws, it's going to be where the slide is on the actual carburetor. So if you look at your carb, you can flip it over, you can look around and there's going to be an adjustment that's right where the slide is. Now, all this is doing is basically giving you a little bit of throttle. It's just adjusting where the actual slide stops. Now, the next thing I wanna point out, your carb on the filter side or the engine side, so filter, engine, filter, engine. So this is where the air comes in. This is where the air goes out to the intake manifold. So air comes in, air goes out. There could be a screw on the filter side, it could be a screw on the engine side. Now these will do and act reverse of what the other one does. The one on the filter side adjusts air, does not adjust actual fuel. Yes, it does adjust air fuel, but do understand that the more you tighten this up, the richer the bike will be because it lets in less air. When you adjust this screw and you bottom it out, it will make it run rich. To lean it out more, if, it's on, if your carb has this on the filter side, you're gonna want to bring it out to lean it up. So half a turn at a time. Now, if it's on the engine side, so it would be on the engine side, either one of these, if it's all the way bottomed out, it's going to be lean because it adjusts fuel, not air. And yes, like I said before, it is an air fuel mixture, but is directly related to fuel if it's on the engine side. So to repeat that, all the way in on the filter side, bottomed out, lets in less air, makes the bike run rich. Half a turn at a time, bringing it out will lean it out. If it's on the engine side, it adjusts the fuel all the way bottomed out will make it lean half a turn at a time bringing it out will richen it up so it will let more fuel in 
and it will adjust your air fuel ratio. So you're gonna wanna start with one to two turns out, and then you're gonna adjust it a half a turn at a time. Now, if you're within a half a turn from the bottom, you're gonna wanna adjust your jet per whatever side, whether it's lean, you need to go up a jet. If it's rich, you need to go down a jet. So three and a half turns out, if you're that far out, you're gonna wanna adjust the jet. So if it's lean, up jet. If it's fat or rich, down jet. Now that's gonna be the most complicated thing of this whole situation. So you may wanna go back to the beginning and it, watch how I explain what each side does, whether you're on the filter side or the engine side. Next is your main jet. You're gonna wanna go out, ride the bike, get it full throttle, and it's gonna spit and sputter and stumble, or it may even die at full throttle. Once you get into full throttle, once it starts running good, it won't spit, it won't sputter. So you're wondering, well, how do I know what's rich and what's lean? If it's rich or fat, it'll sputter and be jerky. If it's lean, it's gonna backfire, it's gonna pop, and it's probably gonna shut off. So once you can get into full throttle and you can kind of back it off on three quarters and it's, it's not spitting or sputtering or anything at the top of the throttle completely full wide open, then that should be pretty much where you need to be. Once you get it running really good at the top end, should be pretty much set right there. Last is your needle. Now you're gonna notice there are five different slots. At the very top, it's gonna be at its leanest setting. At the very bottom, it's gonna be at its richest setting. Now, there is a bunch of different needle angles available for all sorts of carbs. I'm not gonna get into that. But there are numbers, you can change this. If you top this out or bottom it out, you're gonna wanna step up in one direction or the other. We do have multiple different sizes of jets and needles in stock for a lot of different carbs. So you can always check out our website. Now with this, I would always start from the middle. And to adjust this, you're gonna ride it around. You're gonna be anywhere from a quarter to three quarters throttle. Don't be full throttle and see how it acts. If it starts popping and backfiring or it's trying to die, then it's too lean. Now, if you're riding it and it's sputtering and just feels like almost like it's hitting a brick wall, it's, it's too rich, it's too fat. So you're gonna go ahead and raise the clip to lean it out. You're also thinking, okay, is there other ways I can tell if it's rich or it's lean? If it's a two stroke, you can go off of temperature. So you can tell if it's running way too rich, way too lean. And I'll put on the screen the temperature range that you're gonna wanna stick within. The other thing you can check is your spark plug. I'm not gonna go into overly depth about spark plugs and what colors and everything beyond if it's black, it's rich. If it's white, it's too lean. You're gonna to wanna to keep it like a golden brown. You'll be able to know if it's one way or the other, but once you've tuned it and you feel that it's running great, you always wanna check your spark plug. Always have a couple on hand. We do stock a lot of spark plugs for a lot of different bikes. To briefly go back over it, get the bike started and you're gonna adjust the actual idle. One of these screws, it's going to be where the slide is. Set up everything. Start with your idle, then hit your main jet, then your needle, and then once everything feels like it's running great, check your spark plug, watch your temperatures if it's a two stroke. Also watch your temperatures if it's a four stroke. If it's getting too hot, no matter what, it's too lean. Now, last, understand, if you're one of those guys that has two pre-bugs, three pre-bugs, four elites, if you have two bikes sitting right next to each other with the exact identical parts, they will not be the same. You cannot put the same jets in each bike and it'll run perfectly. Just won't happen. So all you guys that are about to drop the comments, hey, what jet size should I start with for this or this or this? It's not gonna matter because it all depends on altitude, depends on temperature, depends on humidity, depends on the parts on the bike, depends on when the parts were made. None of this stuff is blueprinted and everything is exact. It just doesn't. Wear and tear on each item is completely different. So you could be one to two jet sizes completely different 
sit with two bikes sitting side by side. Just understand that. And so that's another thing that we get a lot of questions about. Hey, what jet size should I start with? I have a, a pre-bug with a Corsa and so on and so forth. We can't give you the proper pr place to start because it's going to be way different here versus where you live. Even if we have the same temperature, the same elevation and everything. So I hope this helped you guys out. If you guys have any other questions whatsoever, feel free to drop a comment below. We have many other tuning and tips and tricks in our YouTube videos. Do understand we do not offer support on products you've bought from other companies. We do offer support on products you've purchased through us. We test everything and try to provide you with the best knowledge we can possibly give you. Like I said before, leave a comment down below if you guys have any other questions. And if you've gotten this far in the video, you must like the videos. So go ahead and subscribe. We do have a membership program that's gonna be coming up very soon on our YouTube. It's gonna be offering you guys a lot of extra stuff beyond what we already do. So other than that, I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.